Welcome to Plant Your Seed. I'm your host, Fred Ferris. On each episode, we share stories of how ordinary people have transformed their lives. Each story is compassionate, each story is authentic, and each story is a transformation. Here are the stories of the people who are changing our world by transitioning to a plant-based diet. Today on Plant Your Seed, joining us from Washington State and Georgia, we have Circe Blue and Gigi Carter. Circe is a health coach and Gigi is a nutritionist. Together they have a new book, The Daniel Fast, Why You Should Only Do It Once. This book empowers a reader to take charge of their health by using the Daniel Fast as a jumping off point to a long-term, sustainable, whole food, plant-based, vegan lifestyle. Welcome, Circe and Gigi. Hi there. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're glad to be here. Thanks for being here on Plant Your Seed. Let's start with, what is the Daniel Fast? Yeah, well, the Daniel Fast is actually um, a fast that millions of churches do around the world. Um, And they actually was inspired from the story in the book of the Bible of Daniel. Um, And I'll just give a brief story about it. But um, this was when Daniel was actually... um, placed in the king's palace to be, you know, groomed and all of these other things. And he was offered the king's diet, which was kind of containing of meat, sweets, you know, all the kind of indulgent food, wine, all of that. And Daniel and his friends said, you know what, we don't want to eat this king's diet because it was, it would defile them. And so they said, what we'll do is if you give us a test that if we just eat plants, Um, for 10 days. And if we are not as fit and, um, you know, ready for whatever, um, over those 10 days, then we'll eat the king's diet. And so they put it to the test. And then after the 10 days, not only were they comparable to the people that were eating the, the king's diet, but they were 10 times healthier. And so Dr. Greger calls this the first clinical study of a plant-based diet, but basically Daniel and his friends put it to the test. Um, They came out healthier. And so the church now was inspired by this whole concept of being 10 times healthier. And so every January, you have millions of churches around the world that says, hey, we want to reset. We want to, you know, do this Daniel fast for 21 days. And they omit all, you know, all dairy, all any animal products, all processed food, all sugars, all caffeine, no alcohol. So it's the really the purest sense of a whole food plant based diet. And they do this in combination with um, scriptures and meditation and prayer and all of these things. Um, Yeah, so that's that's the original story of the Daniel Fast. Just out of curiosity, how did they decide it was 10 times healthier that they don't really say but i guess when they compared them maybe in their fitness and how they looked and they they probably had some way of kind of um comparing them maybe in their energy levels but it was obvious i'm guessing that just by looking at it that there was an obvious comparison because the fact that they would say 10 times healthier Mm. somehow whatever it was that distinguished them after 21 days was so obvious that they had to put the 10 times that's how i'm I'm interpreting it right oh that's that's very interesting Mm -hmm. how did the daniel fast transform your health Yeah, I guess I'll start with my story, Gigi, I guess. I'll start with my story. Well, what happened with me is that I was actually diagnosed with uh, high blood pressure um, in my last trimester of my pregnancy. And at the time, I, my, you know, my mother had high blood pressure, my grandmother had high blood pressure, a lot of my aunts and things like that. So at the time, I really didn't understand the severity of blood pressure and the connection to pregnancy. But in retrospect, now I know that Um, women who are diagnosed with high blood pressure have a higher risk of complications during their delivery before, during, or even after birth. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, and it's even higher for African-American women. So I didn't know that at the time. Um, And so when I ended up going into my delivery, I ended up having a complication during delivery. My son had lost oxygen to his brain. He had to be a flight lifted out. And so for the first year of his life, it pretty much we had to have like 24 hour care for him because he wasn't able to like drink on his own. He had a feeding tube and there was a lot of other things that he couldn't do. So it was basically a 24 hour care that we had to have for him for the first year of his life. Shortly after his um, first birthday, he passed away. 
Mm, so sorry. Due to some of those complications. Um, and so, as you can imagine, that was... I mean, the whole experience was traumatic, but at that point and upon losing him, you could imagine that was like the worst, um, I guess the rock bottom that you can experience as a mom, as a family. Sure. Um, and so I was at the lowest point just in general. I was a Christian at the time, so I did have a lot of family support and I was praying and doing all of these things. But I think, you know, of course, in that grief, you're really at a low point. Um, and also too, I think, I also was at the lowest point in my health because I think during this whole crisis, sometimes you can, um, you know, I was eating the standard American diet prior to, but I think I really went in even more during that crisis period sure. because sometimes, you know, some of these foods can be like a comfort. Yeah. And so that's where I was. And so just out of the blue, a friend of mine um, said to me, hey, and I, I'm familiar with the Daniel Fast because like I said, I've done it before in the past, but I, I would tweak it. I never really did it in its purest sense. So a friend of mine in this moment says, hey, I'm doing the Daniel Fast. Let's do it together. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure because I knew what the real stringentness of the Daniel yeah. Fast was. And I was like, okay, I'll do it, but I'm going to add eggs and I'm going to add cheese and I'm going to add, and I was naming all this list of what I was going to add, which wouldn't make it a Daniel Fast, but I was still saying that because I was at that point where I didn't want to really give those foods up. Mm -hmm. And she just arrested me right in the moment. And she said, listen, if you're going to do this Daniel Fast, you're going to have to do it exactly the way it is designed. And so for some reason in that moment, it just arrested me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And so I did the Daniel Fast exactly the way it was designed to the purest form. And I can't tell you if it was three weeks or four weeks or what, but it was almost like, you know, that song I could see clearly now. Right. right yeah. And so I had, my blood pressure was regulated. I lost weight. I had mental and spiritual clarity. I felt like I could hear the voice of God more clearly. I was, you know, the depression was gone. I had all this energy, like it was just literally night and day. And so for the longest time I struggled with that, I was like, was this just a, div a divine miracle or was I an anomaly or what was going on? And so I started to do a lot of research and I started to find out that a whole food plant-based diet was the only diet that could reverse heart disease and help with high blood pressure, diabetes and weight loss and cancers. And I was like, hold up, wait a minute here. What was what science was showing in, in, in the research and what Daniel was doing in the Bible, there was a connection there. And so I went on this mission to start to help um, Christians start to um, connect their food to their faith. Mm. And so I've been on that mission ever since. <laughs> wow. And when was this? This was in 2011. And then I never turned back just for the record after that, that four weeks, I just kept the, kept going on with the Daniel fast. And so I just never looked back. And Gigi. Yeah. And I, I, before I share my story, I just want to say that Cersei's story is absolutely the inspiration for the book um, that I know we'll get to, but it's really that this lifestyle, you know, of making the Daniel fast a lifestyle. And for me, my story, um, kind of goes back to 2007. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, high cholesterol. Uh, I went to uh, visit my doctor for a routine wellness exam and he did, you know, the lipid panel. And then he also did a carotid artery scan of my neck. Mm. And what that shows is it kind of shows plaque building up in your arteries. And when you have plaque in your um, carotid artery, it puts you at risk of heart attack or stroke. And um, the results came back that I had the arteries of a 46 year old, but I was only 35 at that time. Wow. And um, and the doctor wanted to put me on a statin drug. And it was kind of like, you know, a wake up call for me because I was like, I'm only 35. I had in my two. Aren't I too young to be taking these kind of medications? And he was trying to, you know, get me to start taking them. And I just politely refused, walked out because I knew I wasn't taking the best care of myself. And so, um, so I, around the same time had learned about the work of Dr. Dean Ornish and his lifestyle heart trial, where he showed that you could reverse heart disease through lifestyle techniques, including a whole food plant-based diet, 
as well as exercise and some other um, modalities. And I remember saying to myself, you mean I can't have eggs, I can't have cheese, I can't have fish, you know, all these things. And and I just kind of, I was like, this is too extreme for me. So um, I went to what I thought was the next best resource, which was what does the government say is a healthy diet, uh, which in hindsight is kind of funny. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> so I, for about five years, I did what the government said was a healthy diet, which is, you know, poultry, fish, you know, low fat dairy. And so I was eating that for five years and my cholesterol went from horrible to borderline bad and stayed there for five years. Mm. And um, I was kind of getting to a place where I was starting to gain more weight. Um, My energy levels were really low. And um, and so a friend of mine um, was telling me about uh, this this thing called the master cleanse. And so um, I experimented with that a few times. Um, This was back in 2011. And it was for me, I couldn't stay on it for the full 10 days. It's like this concoction of, you know, cayenne, pepper, maple syrup, lemon juice, water, and you're supposed to just drink that and some, you know, for like 10 days. And, and so I lasted about five and then the transition plan to come off of it is to have vegetable broth, raw vegetables and fruits for a few days before you go back to your quote unquote healthy diet. And so I did that a few times. And what I noticed was I felt best, not when I was doing the cleanse, not when I was eating my, my so-called government healthy diet, but it was when I was in that transition phase of when I was just eating vegetables and fruits and, and vegetable broth. And, um, and so I just said, hmm, maybe I need to go vegetarian. And so this was like January 2012. And I still at that point couldn't say no to cheese. Um, And so I just said, I'm going to transition to a vegetarian diet. And so over the course of about six months, that's what I did. I basically started by eating vegetarian twice a week and then three times a week until I was full veg in June of 2012. Well, about a month later, I watched two documentaries back to back. One was Forks Over Knives and the other one was Earthlings. And um, it was on a weekend and in July 2012, and I walked into the kitchen and I said, honey, I'm going vegan. (laughs) (laughs) How How did that go over? I it, well, you know, my husband was kind of on this path anyway for health reasons, and he, to my surprise and delight, said, "Hey, I'll do it with you," and so that was it. It was July 2012. Um, I just switched over right away. It was not difficult at all. I think a lot of it had to do with I had already transitioned to vegetarian, so just getting rid of the cheese and eggs um, was kind of like a no brainer for me. Um, and it was the best decision I ever, ever made. My cholesterol went into the healthy range, lost the excess weight, had all this, you know, mental clarity, spiritual clarity, energy. I started bike racing at 42 years old. Really? <laughs> and, um, in 2016, I quit my corporate job after 22 years to go back to school to earn a master's in nutrition sciences and dedicate the rest of my life to helping others kind of uh, take control of their health as well. So you started bike racing Mm -hmm. at 42. I'm yeah, I'm still a competitive cyclist. So at 52, so how does that go for you as far as like your energy level and, Mm -hmm. and, and being able to stay on the bike and everything? Yeah. I mean, I just got actually, before we logged on here, um, before I was at the dog park, but before that I was doing a two and a half hour ride because I'm doing a race next weekend. So, um, I just, you know, I just eat a variety of whole plant foods and enough to meet my energy needs. And it gives me what I need to be competitive at my age. Wow, that's fantastic. Maybe I, I was thinking maybe I should do that. I don't know. I don't know if I got that in me, but yeah. <laughs> I guess my question is Daniel fast. Okay. So it's not really a fast. It's more like a lifestyle. 
it's traditionally been looked at as a fast. And what we're saying is it needs to be a lifestyle. Mm. And that's the whole point. That's why this, this is a little, this is a big plot twist for people in the church who are familiar with the Daniel fast. They're going to be like, wait a minute, hold up. You mean you make this a lifestyle? (laughs) I don't just do Mm. this for three weeks and then go back to my normal, you know, diet that's making me sick. Mm. Um, (laughs) So. That's interesting, right? So people do this for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And usually it's like, if you give somebody 10 days, from my experience, people will be like, oh man, I have so much energy. I feel fantastic. Like you said, mental clarity. People who have had acne, their skin clears up. So Mm -hmm. it's like you go three weeks now and it's almost like, why would you go back? That's it. And that's the whole premise of the book. That's why we entitled it Daniel Fast, Why You Should Only Do It Once. It really shouldn't be something that you're doing every January and then going back. And so our platform is that there's a disconnect there because Mm. there's so many people that are doing it. And because they don't go into it for their health, they're going into it because we're doing it as a fast, as a reset, to pray for so many things, which is fine. They miss the original inspiration behind the Daniel fast, which is, was he was 10 times healthier. And so they miss that and just go back to their old way of eating. And part of what we are doing with this book is to disrupt that concept and to say, Hey, wait a minute, you should be doing the Daniel fast one last time and making it a lifestyle. Yep. Now, why is it that there is a disconnect? Yeah, I, I think there's a few reasons. I think it's a, you know, it's a complex issue partly because I think people are afraid to not eat meat in animal products. Mm. There's a misconception, as you know, around protein and not getting enough protein. There's also, I think, societal and cultural pressures. Um, You know, you'll hear people say, well, this is how I grew up. This is my, you know, tradition and all that. But, you know, we argue that your tradition shouldn't become law. You can still honor your heritage and your culture, you just do it in a healthier way. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the fact that, you know, so many people are passing down diseases over the generations, you know, should be a wake up call because, you know, you're basically trading in years of healthy living for, you know, uh, a so-called tradition that was, you know, that was just made up at some point in time in the past that, you know, where longevity wasn't really much of an issue as it is today. You know, if you think back to, um, you know, because I'm biracial and my, you know, when I think about the African-Americans in my family, slavery it was like the average lifespan was like, you know, maybe 40 years old. So longevity wasn't even an issue. It was just more survival. Mm. And whereas nowadays longevity is the, it's the thing. I mean, it is the thing. It's like, how can you grow old and have as many healthy years as you can? You know, there's this lifespan and this health span concept And, you know, medications will keep your lifespan long, but you'll live a diseased life, you know, sick, you know, bogged down with doctor's appointments, medications, all those things. Whereas we're saying, let food be your medicine and have your health span be equal to your lifespan. You know, have those long, those those golden years, those 80s, 90s, even the centenarians, you know, be those years where you're healthy, vibrant, and, you know, living a good life. Um, and, and that's really kind of our point around that. <laughs> I always find it funny when people bring up the protein thing. I, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but to me, mm-hmm. it's just really funny because, mm-hmm. you know, most of these, most of the people that bring it up are, I think they're just curious, right? And so that they feel like, oh, well, where, where do you get your protein? And I'm like, okay, so you went to Burger King or McDonald's or whatever, and you're worried about where I'm getting my protein? Um, yeah. I know that you're not a nutritionist because you wouldn't be going there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but I always find that funny. Do you guys find that uh, you get those questions a lot? Yeah, oh. yeah, for sure. I, I think a lot of it is, I think most people understand that vegetables and fruits and all that do good to the body. But I think where the disconnect comes in is a lot of people don't understand the harm that the other foods are doing to their mm. body. And so that is, I think, where the education needs to come in, where we can bridge the gap, because a lot of people are like, no, I'm just eating fish. I'm eating like, like, you know, you think you're doing the right thing. And even though, you know, yeah, fruits and vegetables are good, they don't really understand what exactly is happening to their body when they eat those other foods. And I think once people start to get more exposed to that knowledge that, wait a minute, this, th these things are cancer causing and disease causing wait a minute, maybe I want, I don't want to partake in this stuff. Yeah. And in the book, we actually do talk about those substances. So we get into things like trimethylamine and oxide, um, you know, heme iron, heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So we like, we get into that to, um, to make that point because so much emphasis too much emphasis is put on the protein mm -hmm. that those animal products provide, but they don't nobody talks about the the inflammation that is caused by eating these products and these foods and and so you know when you when you look at the science and it's very overwhelming and we do cite actual papers in our book mm -hmm. um uh peer reviewed articles um association you know um ex uh, studies as well um that that it's the case is so strong that eating whole plant foods while eliminating those pro-inflammatory foods is what gives you, gives you the best result. And, um, and it just makes sense. I mean, if you know, the studies are showing this and you are completely removing them out of your diet. And this is where this whole thing around, we get into this debate sometimes with people around moderation, mm. you know, and, um, and, and so, but you, if you completely eliminate those pro-inflammatory foods and just feed your body foods that restore your health, that lower inflammation, that are high in antioxidants, high in fiber, um, you'll get the best result, you know, physically, as far as how you feel, but it also shows up in your lab work as well. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I, it's, a, it's an awesome opportunity, um, Frederick, because, you know, getting people to do even 21 days of a vegan diet sometimes could be very difficult, mm. but here's an opportunity because you have millions of people around the world who are already willing to do the 21 days. We're just helping them make those connections. And there was actually a study that, that was done that showed um, people in the Bible Belt in certain Southern rural areas, when they had them do the Daniel Fast, entitled it the Daniel Fast, they had a 98% successful rate of completing the days as opposed to when they called it a vegan diet. Mm. So people, it's making people make those connections that, Hey, you're already doing the Daniel fast. You're already connecting this to your faith. You're already connecting this to your spirituality. Now we're going to give you the last piece to let you realize, wait a minute, why not just take it a step further and make it a lifestyle? Now you guys, a little bit ago, you talked about traditions, right? And I think that's one thing that we know is that disease runs in families because diets run in families. Right. So when you go back and you look at, you know, cause uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always getting people like, well, my dad lived to 250, you know, or whatever it is. And I'm like, okay, well, that's great. My dad died when he was 54 and I'm mm -hmm. 60 now. So mm -hmm. I've already outlived him. What does that have to do with me? It mm -hmm. doesn't have anything to do with you because what you are doing is totally different than what was happening during their lifetime. They didn't mm -hmm. have the McDonald's. They didn't have the fast food. They didn't have all of this stuff. What is it about traditions that makes it so hard to break it? I think, I think it's partly, um, you know, it's, it's a mindset. It's a limiting belief that I think a lot of people have. Um, I had it. I mean, obviously it took me five years. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I would say that, 
the limiting belief that was relevant to me, I think is relevant to other people who struggle with this, which was in my mind, I thought that if I didn't eat these foods, the quality of my life would go down. Mm. And when you, when you, when you say it's tradition and it's rooted in my culture and all that, you think you're trying to, you know, you're, you've got this limiting belief that all of a sudden you're going to be disconnected from your culture. And that's just not, that's just doesn't make any sense if you think about it logically, you know, um, and and so that limiting belief of for me, which was my the quality of my life would go down if I couldn't eat these foods, um, you know, showed up that when I did get rid of those foods, the quality of my life increased exponentially. Mm. Um, I was never athletic in high school or college. I mean, I was a complete couch potato when when some of my friends who'd known me for a long time saw that I was bike racing. They're like, I cannot believe this is Gigi. <laughs> like, I could not believe it because the Gigi that they knew, you know, was never athletic, was never fit. You know, um, I was always kind of a marshmallowy person, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and I'm showing up and I'm racing and being competitive and. And um, so for me, and and what when I talk about the quality of my life, it's not just the personal fitness, but it's all the friends that I've made through cycling and all the places I've visited and the experience I had. So the quality of my life increased significantly when I gave up those foods. So it's really interesting when I thought that the quality of my life would go down at one point by not eating those foods, the direct opposite happened. I was wondering, what exactly does the Daniel fast do to the body? What the Daniel fast does. So we talk in our book about the King's diet is analogous to the standard American diet today. Mm. And so what the Daniel fast does to your body is basically you're simultaneously removing all the pro-inflammatory foods from your diet. So meat, dairy, eggs, alcohol, added, you know, like sugars and preservatives and that kind of stuff, chemicals, and you're replacing it with whole plant food. So this is a very clean diet. There's no processed, even there's no processed plant-based meats in this Daniel fast. It's, mm -hmm. it's, we're talking vegetables, fruits, mushrooms, whole grains, legumes, beans, peas, lentils, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices. So that is what you're eating. And so it's the cleanest form of a whole food plant-based diet, basically. And so when you do those two things simultaneously, eating those those foods that restore your health while simultaneously completely eliminating pro-inflammatory foods, you, you end up basically feeling like a new person. You know, you're going to the bathroom more regularly because you've, you're finally eating some fiber, right? <laughs> your cells are basically absorbing all of those wonderful nutrients and, and bioactive compounds that come from whole plant foods and they're responding favorably um, so you not only get the weight loss and the, in the boost in energy, but you're healing your body at a cellular, at a tissue level, um, in the process. And a lot of times we don't, you know, depending on your age and, and kind of your, your health status, sometimes you, you don't know what you're, what you're reversing in your body. You may not have been, you may not be diagnosed with that illness yet, but right. it's already propagating in your body. Mm -hmm. And so you know, thankfully food is medicine. And if your lifestyle, if, if your lifestyle is bringing on a disease, whether it's manifested in a diagnosis or not, um, your lifestyle, if you change it can also reverse that. Um, and that's what we love and that's what we're excited about and hope this book helps uh, people to accomplish. Now, is that, a, is it a raw diet? It's no. not raw. Mm -mm. So you can no. cook stuff. Yeah. No, there's yeah, cooked beans. Yeah, we have we have a a, a recipe website called DanielsPlate.com with um, Daniel Fast compliant recipes on it, and um, it does include things like baked oatmeal. You know, we've got this delicious carrot cake baked oatmeal that's made with shredded carrots and raisins and simple 
homemade date syrup and spices and some nuts. And then we've also got some bean recipes that can be made in the instant pot or the slow cooker and or on the stovetop. And so it's it's both raw and cooked, but it's just whole plant foods in or close to their most natural state. Now you guys are like 3000 miles apart. So yes. how did you guys <laughs> meet up? Yeah, it's a, such a funny story. We actually met in the middle of the pandemic. And, um, you know, I was doing my own thing in this space. Gigi was doing her own thing in her space. And she actually uh, wrote an article with someone and they reached out to me because I had a podcast at the time. And they said, hey, we would love to come on your podcast. I said, sure, come on. Um, and Gigi and I just really hit it off because we we both had this radical empathy. Because remember, at the time, we were like in the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And we, what we were noticing is that people who had chronic health issues were, were having more complications and higher risk for death. And this was even higher in the Black community. And so we saw this that was happening. And Gigi and I were like, wait a minute, we have the answer. You know, we both have that radical empathy. We're like, if people could eliminate the chronic health issue, then that could eliminate this whole dynamic. And so we both came together. I ended up going on to her podcast in return. And I told her my story about the Daniel fast. And, you know, one day Gigi was on her bike. Her bike is where she gets a lot of her inspiration from. And uh, she was on the bike and she, and I wrote a story just talking about the story I told you, but how to transition to a whole food plant-based diet using the Daniel fast. Mm. And so when she saw that article that I wrote for her, she was like, wait a minute, I think this can help a lot of people. Um, and so we came together in the middle of the pandemic. Um, we literally, um, we literally started this whole thing together. We never met for one whole year, but we just hit the ground running and we felt like it was a divine connection because the odds of us meeting 3000 miles away and all of this would not. And, you know, we always talk about this Gigi, but you know what we didn't, we didn't put this in the book, but this is a side note, but what we realized, and this is how I knew it was a whisper from God for me that this was a divine connection and divine mission was that I had sent her, this was maybe months into us working together. I had sent her a video of my son's funeral. Mm -hmm. um, and so she was watching it with her mom and she came back to me in tears and she said, you know what? The, the date of KJ's death is my birthday. Mm -hmm. And I almost fell off of my chair because what are the odds that there's millions of birthdays, there's millions of death days on the planet that those two would intersect when this was the inspiration behind the Daniel Fast, behind my story. It, I don't know. I can't even talk. But yeah, that that was another just an affirmation. And then we've been working on this since. So that's the story. <laughs> wow. That's so crazy that you guys just kind of met up and decided to work together. I mean, yeah. a lot of times people might meet up, but you know, something comes up and, and yeah. somebody kind of yeah. leaves it and you know, you both have to be on the same page. That's, that's it fantastic. Was, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing because I, I we talk about it today, like at all of our beliefs, integrity, there was just such a connection, even, you know, just our lifestyle, we, we ate whole food plant based without and you know, it was just everything just aligned. And we knew that it just couldn't be an accident. So yeah. What is it about your faith that makes you so passionate about the Daniel fast? Yeah. You know, Gigi can speak it for herself, but you know, what, what, what makes us so passionate about this is that, you know, we believe that, you know, as a Christian, everyone has a divine purpose on this planet to, to do something good, to make the world a better place, to show up and, and be God's hands in the earth. And if we're not healthy, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. If we're cutting our lives short, if we don't have the energy, if we don't have mental and spiritual clarity, then it actually compromises our purpose. And so how the faith piece comes in is that if we start to see what we put as the end of our fork, as a spiritual practice, as a means of being healthy for our divine purpose, it gives us a deeper why. 
you know, because a lot of times people, they, they're, they're, they're eating this way and they're falling off the wagon. And I know Gigi could talk about this, but we say this is the fifth why to going vegan. You know what I mean? Because when you attach it, when you have your faith, it's who you are. You really can't separate your faith from who you are. And so when you start aligning the fact that, wait a minute, I need to be healthy. God wants me to be healthy. And what I eat is aiding to that then every time the temptation is so different because now you're realizing I'm not tempted for a burger. I'm driven to purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's a difference, you know, trying to avoid temptation or running to purpose. Those are two different energies. Right. And, and Cersei will, Cersei will sometimes say, well, we'll we'll both say that, you know, a lot of times people think we're in the health and wellness business, but we're really in the purpose business. Mm -hmm. And, um, and for me, I didn't have this, this calling until I got healthy through a whole food plant-based lifestyle, because I never had the the mental and spiritual clarity to hear, you know, from God, what I was supposed to be doing with my life. And, um, and so for me, I can remember, you know, I was working, I was, you know, I was a leader in a pretty major company um, with a pretty cushy corporate paycheck. (laughs) And I remember, you know, hearing kind of feeling nudged to leave that and kind of go back to school, get trained in nutrition education and help other people. And it was hard for me because I knew I would be starting from ground zero again. And, um, to walk away from my corporate job, you know, and just re- restart everything in, you know, at the age that I was, I think I was 45, um, that it was, it was difficult, you know, it was a difficult decision, but I knew that it was what I had to do. Um, and so the faith piece and the, and the, and the vegan piece really kind of connected for me when I adopted a whole food plant-based vegan diet, because it was, that was when I heard, okay, this is what you're supposed to be doing. I was feeling restless leading up to that. So, but, but I had that sense of calm, you know, once I made that change. And, um, and so I, I did, I walked away from the, from the corporate gig and, and, uh, got my little school backpack together <laughs> back to school. <laughs> <laughs> now, where did you get the courage to just get up and leave? Yeah. It was God, honestly. It was this it was it was it, I can remember I remember I had just come back from a bike ride. I was laying on the floor um on the yoga mat and just quiet, just completely quiet and And it was this, this feeling that I had that it was time and that it was going to be okay. And, um, and so that's when I kind of made that decision. And a lot of people were like, what are you doing? Like, you're crazy. You know, you're walking away. You've got this, you know, these restricted stock options you're (laughs) leaving on the table and you're doing all this. And you're like, what are you doing? And, um, and I felt good about it. Don't don't get me wrong. It, it was scary, you know, but I, I took the, the leap of faith and, and made the tough decision to do it. Um, I felt like it was, you know, being obedient with what God wanted me to do. And so, um, so that's kind of how I did it. Um, yeah. So how is it? I'm sure this is, I'm just curious. How, how is it working out for you? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel good about what I'm doing. I love, you know, the work that Cersei and I are doing. I love the fact that we are changing lives. We get testimonials from people who go through our program, lowering their A1C, you know, reversing their type two, getting off of medications, losing weight, having more energy, Um, it's extremely rewarding, um, much more so I would say than what I was doing before. I mean, what I was doing before was financially rewarding, but spiritually it wasn't, um, it, it wasn't my jam. So, yeah. How does that make you feel when you, when you get something from people that have told you that you've helped them change their lives? Yeah. I mean, for me, it just, 
I feels like it's worth it. You know, it feels like, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know if Cersei can answer too. But that's no, it, it does. Feel. And, and like I said, um, you know, it's kind of like they say, you know, nothing, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. But I think there could be a spin on that, that nothing feels as good as being in your purpose and calling feels. Mm. Being where you're supposed to be, even though it may not be perfect in all the other, you know, may, not in every way, but being where you're supposed to be is a wonderful feeling. I find that aligning yourself with your passion and your purpose is so important. And, and it's not about the money because it's always about the happiness and how you can align yourself with that purpose and passion. Do you guys feel that you are happier now together working on this project as opposed to how you felt before? Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. How has it changed your life? I would say it's kind of making me more accountable too. Um, you know, I was up until about a, almost a year ago, you know, I wasn't like a, a, like a heavy drinker, but I would drink beer like a couple times a week, you know, um, socially. Um, and, and it's made me more accountable because of what we do. I quit drinking like mm -hmm. November, 2022, like altogether, I just quit drinking yeah. and I, I feel better. I, I was already feeling good, but I feel even better not having any alcohol in my life at all. And then more recently, um, uh, I, I got rid of coffee, which was something that I would say I was addicted to since I was in mm -hmm. high school. Mm. Um, and I, and I know, I knew it wasn't, you know, not coffee's not bad for you, but I knew I wasn't supposed to be drinking it. It kind of, I started feeling this, this nudge to get rid of it when Cersei and I started working together mm -hmm. and, um, I just kind of ignored it. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Why should I stop drinking coffee? I'm not hurting nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but what, I, but what's true though is that, you know, coffee and coffee and alcohol are one of the major reasons for people having anxiety, you mm. know, um, they contribute to anxiety. And, um, but mostly it was for me, it was because, you know, with our program, when people do the Daniel fast, you eliminate all caffeine. And, um, and I needed to, I needed to, you know, walk the walk from what we were you know, promoting. Now, when you're done with the fast, we do say, yes, you can add coffee back, but we do recommend um, if you're going to add any caffeine back, go with green tea. It's just, you know, nutritionally superior to coffee. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so that's what I do. I'll, I'll have some green tea, but when we get ready to do our boot camp and the fast and everything, I'm just going to not drink the green tea. I'm just not going to have any caffeine at all. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so for me, it just has created a kind of a little more accountability to make sure that I'm, you know, that I'm, that I'm, that my ship is tight, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Definitely. It definitely makes you more accountable. Um, because you're always wanting to do better because as you help people, you're helping in, indirectly, you're helping yourself. But a, another piece too, for me is that it's, it's, it's a form of therapy because of everything that I've been through this whole journey together is a way of making meaning or finding purpose in the middle of all of that as well. Now you both talked about spiritual clarity. Can yeah. you explain that to me? what you mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll start. Cersei. Yeah. Cersei. I mean, for me, um, I'll just, I'll just go back. So when, um, before I adopted a whole food, whole food, plant-based, whole food, plant-based vegan diet, 
and was eating kind of like vegetarian or standard American. Um, I've always been someone who prayed and would write in a journal and, and I was always asking for clarity around, you know, what I should be doing, you know, what I should be focusing on. I mean, cause it was, it really goes back to like, just even making career moves. I'm like, you know, cause I being in a corporation, you tend to relocate, you know, around the country or some cases the world, but for me, it was more around the country and um and so and then entertaining different opportunities and whatever and so it was just around you know just trying to understand what should i be doing and i never felt like connected like i always felt like you know i was trying to do the right thing i was trying to do what i think god wanted me to do but i wasn't really sure i didn't have that feeling and so it wasn't until i i changed my diet when I felt the clarity come to me. And what I mean by that is I could, I could hear God's voice more clearly in terms of telling me what to do. And it shows up in terms of a feeling of calmness, of peace, and then of, um, you know, just in terms of, in terms, in terms of just kind of even outwardly projecting, you know, what, what I'm supposed to do, what I'm supposed to say. And you just feel in alignment with your calling. And, and that's for me, what was, what I mean by spiritual clarity. I finally heard I'd been praying, I'd been journaling, I'd been trying to, what am I supposed to do? How, you know, just, but I just never felt like I heard what I was supposed to Mm. do until after I um, changed my diet. Yeah. And for me, you know, that is a part of it too. But for me, one of the things I could pull out was, you know, you don't realize how much you're using food to meet needs that food can't meet. Mm. And so part of the spiritual clarity for me was realizing that, wait a minute, I was missing opportunities of connecting with God because I was using food when I was angry or using food, food for pain or using food for the, all those things. And so there's a spiritual clarity that came where I was able to see the difference and be able to connect on a spiritual level with God for my emotions or my pains or my desires, rather than realizing that, wait a minute, all this time I was trying to use food to do something that it couldn't meet. And so there was a level that was able to be clear on that, for example. Now, as far as your faith and other people, how do you approach them as far as a vegan lifestyle? I think one of the things, and I think this is why the Daniel fast is so powerful, is that we already have someone who did it, right? So for people who are of faith and you're actually pulling from a story in the Bible of someone who was 10 times healthier, that's a starting point of a conversation. It's like, do you want to be 10 times healthier? You know, and so it allows people to start to see themselves in Daniel. You know, a lot of times we say, do you want to be a Daniel in your own life and refuse the king's diet? Because you're in a similar situation where you may have to draw the line in the sand and say, you know what, standard American diet, I'm not interested because I do want to be 10 times healthier. So it's the power of story. It's the power of identifying yourself in the scripture, behind the person and all of that. And so that's a, a, a wonderful opening to do. And I mean, there's a verse that says in Genesis 20, 20, 29 verse 11 that says, I've given you all the plants on the earth to be your meat. And so you start pulling in scriptures that validate this and it starts to open people's eyes. Yeah. What, yeah. Genesis 129. Sorry, and, 129. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. in, in, in that was really God's intent f- for us and for animals w- were to eat plants. So when you go, this all happened before sin entered the equation. So Mm. his perfect design for us was to eat plants and for animals to eat plants, not for animals to eat other animals or people to eat animals, but everybody to eat plants and sin entered the world and then it changed. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, from a faith-based perspective, it's our way back home. And so when people start to make that connection, then it, it makes more sense. Your book was just released. What is the 
reaction been? Yeah, it was. So it was literally just released. We did um, send out a few advanced review copies to some um, some people who are part of our inner circle and our program, our four week um, program. And um, the response has been extremely favorable. The first part of the book is new content. And now they've heard quite a bit of this already through our Healthy Christian Woman Boot Camp and our four-week course. So it was, it was for them, some of it was a little new and maybe spun a little bit differently. Um, so for them, it was just kind of reaffirming things that we've been talking about and what they've been doing. Um, this, the, the second part of the book are more helpful resources. Like we've got a four week journal included as a bonus in this book, as well as some helpful recipes to get started. And, um, and then there's, it kind of, the, the last part of the book is really around frequently asked questions. So the response has been extremely favorable. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people love the way that we've, it's it's very candid. I mean, when we talk about, you know, chapter titles, it's like stop defiling yourself. Mm -hmm. Like we're pretty candid and you know, what, yeah. what did you say? It's the it's the book you never knew you needed. Or yeah, something. it's the straight talk you never knew you needed. But we've had a lot of people reach out to us and say, you know what? Thank you for this platform because I never associated my faith with my food. Mm. I've always left it off the table. And I didn't realize that my faith could be my superpower in this, like, you know, and so we had people reach out for that because, you know, I, we were talking when we originally did it and we said, you know what, you know, people of faith use their faith for so many decisions, what job they're going to make, who they're going to marry, where they're going to move, but they never thought to think, well, what about what I eat and how I take care of my body? And so a lot of people are loving that connection. We've had a lot of people reach out to us too and said, hey, I'm not necessarily a faith person, but I have a lot of family members that are, and this is just perfect for me to have a conversation with them and speak their language so that they can understand the message as well. Yeah. And we've gotten endorsements from like Dr. Joel Furman and Dr. Dr. Neil Barnard and others. And so um, those that have read the, the manuscript or the book, you know, have, you know, know that this is a different kind of book. There's no other book out there in like out there in the universe that we know of um, that combines both the faith piece as well as the whole food plant based piece. Yeah, I I love that. I I love the way you brought it together for me by saying that. Well, first of all, the faith piece and the plant based piece, and then a lot of people are always looking for help. As far as um, I'm looking for clarity, I'm looking for mm -hmm. how's what's the next job I'm gonna get, or mm -hmm. who should I marry, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile. A lot of times people, like you said, forget that your body is a temple. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's something that, that a lot of people forget. And I just love the way you brought that together for me. Now, what is a habit or hack or tip that you might have either in your book or that you have personally that helps you keep on track with your plant-based diet? Well, for me, and I'm everybody who knows me knows this. I is, is my big rainbow salad. Like it just, it just makes me feel so good inside. <laughs> it's just, it's a, like a huge mixing bowl basically of just leafy greens or a combination of kale, arugula, and mixed greens. And then there's, you know, some kind of legume, chickpeas, beans, lentils, whatever. Um, and then just a rainbow of different vegetables on it. And when I eat that, and I eat that pretty much every single day, sometimes I don't like if I'm traveling, I, I have a hard time really getting that. I'll get a salad in, but not that nice big one. Um, it just, it really grounds me. And I just, my, I can, I, when I eat it really slow and intentionally, I can, I feel like I could feel it going into my cells and I'm mm. like, oh, this is nice. You know? <laughs> <So> it, <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. I, you know, for me, I've always been someone who said grace over my food. And when after I developed a whole food plant based diet and, and, and decided to go vegan now, 
I use grace in a different way because before I would be like, okay, just bless this food. It didn't even matter what I was eating. It could have been Burger King. And I was like, Lord, bless this food. You know what mm. I mean? But now I'm more intentional. And now I ask the question, is this food worthy to be blessed? And so now it's more, it makes me grounded and intentional because now I have an accountability that's higher than myself because I'm asking God to bless this meal that I'm about to eat, but is it really going to bless me? Is it going to nurture me? Is it going to do what it's supposed to do for my body so that I can live out my purpose or not? And I use grace as a constant reminder because I just say it over my meals every day. Now, finally, can you give me one word to describe how you felt before you became vegan and one word to describe how you feel now that you are vegan? Ooh, one word. I have to do two. I'll start. I, I couldn't do one. I tried. I'm thinking in my brain, but the only, because I couldn't really figure out a word for it. But prior to, I would say that I was living on a lower vibration. I didn't even know it though, because I thought I was living my best life, but it wasn't until I removed those foods from my body and I realized where that I, I thought I was on 90 and I didn't realize I was really on like 25. So I would say prior, it was a lower vibration. And then after, I feel like I'm living on a higher frequency. Mm. And so now I feel like I'm up in the 90s and the 100s, but I didn't know it before. I thought I was there. And now I could see, wait, 25, 95, 25, 95. So it just, it, I, I'm able to see that clear gap. Mm. Yeah. yeah, My mine is before disconnected, after connected. I love that. I love both Great of job. those. Great job. I love the one where you stuck to it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Giving seriously a little latitude. Breaking the rules. A little latitude. <laughs> <laughs> She's a rule breaker. <laughs> Such a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. What is the best way for people to buy your book, follow you guys on Instagram or the web or social media in general? Yeah. Healthyformypurpose.com is our main hub, one stop shop. There you can. Um, check out the book. You could also get a link to our recipe website, Daniel's Plate, um, as well as all of our social uh, handles. So healthyformypurpose.com. And danielsplate.com, just if you just want recipes. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just making that clear. Yeah. Because you could just go straight to Daniel's Plate too. Yeah. Thank you, Gigi and Circe for being on Plant Your Seed. Thank you for awesome. having Thank us. you for having us. Hope you are inspired by this story. And remember, it's never too late to plant your seed. Links to everything we talked about on the podcast can be found on Instagram at plant.yourseed in the show notes tab in the bio. If you enjoyed the show, remember to leave us a review. And until next time, thank you for listening.